done between the three in this set of parentheses. Upon entering a classroom in any given Pasco County school, you may realize that things seem a bit cramped. This feeling may come from the school board's violation of the Florida Class Size Reduction Amendment, a state amendment passed in 2002 that limits the amount of students in a core high school classroom to 25. Along with this violation comes a respectable fine that Pasco County continues to pay, allowing them to get away with having upwards of 45 kids in a single class at one time. We caught up with a couple students and faculty members at 5A High School in Hudson, Florida to hear what they had to say about this violation. I think the hardest thing that class size has an effect on uh, the student is it's a little bit easier for our students to get distracted in bigger classes. It's harder for the, the teacher to, to give as much one-on-one -on -one attention to each student, to, give, to make sure that they're all on track. By the time you've got 40 to 50 kids in a class, by the time you get to that 50th kid, the first person you checked on is already back to being distracted and off track again. Um, so it's a little bit easier for a student that chooses to be off track um, and not be participating on a daily basis to fall into the gaps and not get recognized as easily or as quickly. I mean, when there's so many students in a class and I mean, there's students talking, there's students not doing their work, there's some students that are working on top of him trying to teach. It does make it a little bit harder because when you really do want to learn and you want to ask him a question, he's too busy telling a student to be quiet or telling a student to get back to work. While I'm sitting here struggling with math, there's other students that don't really care, don't really want to do their work. Instead, they're getting the attention that low-key the people that need it deserve. So, yeah. Um, as a teacher, the biggest thing that having additional students in a classroom changes is the amount of grading that goes along with the course. Um, if I have five classes of 25 students, then I have 125 kids. That's 125 tests to grade, that's 125 homeworks to grade. Um, not so bad. But if you have 40 kids in five classes, you go from 125 tests to grade, 125 homeworks to grade, now to 200 tests to grade and 200 homeworks to grade. So it's a lot of additional work when it comes to grading and entering grades. Now if we have kids um, that turn in, in assignments late or turn in tests late, it's a lot more work to keep track of and it's harder to get the kids the grades that they rightfully deserve um, when we're doing a lot of additional grading and a lot of a lot of our time and, and energy is spent doing things that are on top of just keeping kids on track. Education wise in general I believe that um, smaller class sizes allow us to better reach the most kids. If we have kids that need additional support whether it's in math or in reading or in science or whatever it may be the smaller the class size is, it allows me to spend more individual time um, with each student. So if I get, let's say I get 50 minutes a week where I can dedicate to one-on-one -on -one working with students. Well, if I have 30 kids in a classroom, that's less time that I can spend individually working with each kid. Um, to better suit our students and to educate us all properly, um, and to give every kid the, the education that they need and deserve, uh, we need to find a way as a society to refocus our energy and our finances on education so that we can stop this cycle before it becomes out of hand. Um, the more we allow class sizes to grow, it's okay as long as our students are dedicated and focused on learning, um, but it's easier for us to lose track of the kids that need the most help. Um, and at the end of the day, the more kids we lose track of, that's more kids that aren't going to graduate and are going to not be able to go on and go to college. So if we want to reach everybody and we want to educate everybody equally and, and fairly, we need to make sure that we have the opportunities for teachers to get them caught up on things that they may or may not be behind on. And we can't do that with class sizes that approach 40 to 50 students in one period. From overloaded grading responsibilities to not receiving adequate instruction when needed, classes that violate this amendment negatively affect both the teachers and students of Pasco County. In order to give the highest quality learning and teaching environment for the Pasco County Schools communities, 
This board must take action to lower their student to teacher classroom ratio to at most 25 to 1. This has been Hunter Berger with a special report.